moments like that. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Did you say we're using the wrong hands? No, of course I didn't. Of course I didn't fully explain. With all of these crafty goods here, we've got a little challenge. It's Valentine's Day. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> we're both just so excited for it that we're going to celebrate with some <laughs> art, but with a little bit of a twist and hopefully it can be kind of funny. <laughs> we're going to test our skills with the non-dominant hand. I'm looking at the scissors and I'm thinking, okay, because I didn't bring left-handed uh, scissors. These are lefties. They're the lefties. Mm -hmm. Oh, because I thought they were the right the No, they're ones. lefties, are right. I'm used to the left-handed oh. ones being these. I don't you remember these being... No, the left-handed ones have got the yellow and the I'm green just... handle, and I'm devastated that I'm not going <laughs> to force you to use the yellow and green handle ones how I had to. I just remember that it was the colour. The, yeah, the yeah. odd colour. Yeah, the odd colour I've got. So it made all the lefties feel like there were the odd ones out in the class. I get Even to show more. off how good I am with my right hand. Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> You've been forced so much throughout your childhood to use your right hand that you must be pretty good. I'm not bad, I'm not bad. How um how are we gonna time this? <laughs> this isn't fair, what is it? <laughs> how are we gonna time this? <laughs> how are we gonna time this? I actually have no idea. Have you got a I've got my watch. phone. I have my phone, I'll put what's on my phone. Okay. So ten minutes. Ten minutes. And the, and the challenge just is to represent Valentine's Day with some kind of image slash gif. Valentine's being art. Moving that water. Make that I'm going to end up knocking that water over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need my left hand for thinking, but for some reason I've got no ideas that you can come to me. Right, shall I hit the timer then? Are you ready? Yes. Ready as you'll ever be. Go for it. Go. Okay. That's it. I pride myself on art. <laughs> this makes me want to cry. This is the thing about art, isn't it? That usually nobody wants to make that first mark on a blank canvas. It's like, but what if I mess it up? If my teacher used to come over, if you were, it took too long, you'd just go like that with a, one of these. No. It'd just do that in the middle of the page and then rub it. I kind of have heard of that like, tactic before because it takes away the anxiety yeah. of, you know. But if you're a perfectionist, he's just ruined your chance of making it. Making any start, yeah, I suppose like. <laughs> <laughs> what did I do? It's my stupid idea. I'm gonna say do this. this is your uh, your challenge. I happily. <laughs> right. I need to get on with something. Something. <laughs> I did. <laughs> so nothing is this is happen. the two ADHD styles right here. Like one's just bitch bash bash getting on with it, and the other's like free. <laughs> you know, like what would go wrong? <laughs> I think I'm so used to going wrong at every turn that I just think now I'm good at corrections. I'm good at making like you're doing it art out of um, mistakes and things. So can I use my elbow? That's what I'm trying to. Yeah, you can use like the other hand to just hold the place. Things. That's what you would do, isn't it, with okay. your other hand? Like I'm, I'm just thinking that I need to hold this still. Okay, this is way different to trying to use left-handed scissors with your right hand. Or vice versa, I imagine you get. These are like... I don't mind them. It's not a straight line, but I'm doing it way better than the pencil. Yeah, yeah, found a natural skill there, like using your <laughs> using your hand to cut. I know, the paper's rolling and I can't find the other edge to cut from. I'm going to have to just go around this way. <laughs> That's all going. Not bad, not bad, I'm not... Oh my God, I'm, not I'm not got an overall plan, but I've made a start, so it's like... You know, it's going to take shape as I go along. That's the flow of the artist. <laughs> I would say, you're looking way more relaxed. Have you seen how tense this hand is? This is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be fun. This is going to end with you being like, this is my picture, and then I'll just be rocking in the corner. <laughs> so, this was my plan to cook half a heart. Oh, that's not nice. It looks like Africa. <laughs> it looks like Africa. That's not oh, God. You love them the size of Africa. The continent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
It's over hand support a lid on. What? Have you been using your other hand to help you with well, no, I did this whole time? Like... I did do it, love. Can I use my elbow? That's what I'm trying to Yeah, you can use like the other hand to hold it. That's thing. what you would do, isn't it? With okay. your other hand, like, one handed like that on my lid. But surely you can, because just because you're not using your dominant hand, you would still use your other hand to help you make something, wouldn't you? Pull the lid off and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've just got to actually do the, you know, the okay. dominant stuff with the wrong hand. So I'm making stuff harder for myself. Is that what you're telling me? Mm. It's a general theme in life, I understand. Yeah. I'm making <laughs> stuff harder. Maybe this is myself. the point of the exercise, but we're going to find out how we go about life. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, metaphors that you can, like, draw from and learn messages from. I'm trying to make sense, but I'm also trying to direct this <laughs> in the correct way. I'm like, yeah, that's enough. Hello, I'm trying to finish off my little uh, ditty thinking, how do I finish this? There's so many ways. Do I want to be funny? Do I want to be sweet and loving? I just want to have something on the page. <laughs> 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 I'm oh, at the point of like, four what? and a half minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it is six minutes, what? <laughs> no. No, 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 right. Okay. Stop talking! <laughs> You've not said anything for me. Yeah, no, no, I just have to have you think you're like, hmm. Okay, so it's like a child to it, isn't it? Not as that there's anything wrong with a child writing anything. <laughs> the love of my life is going to be like, hmm, how much more are you? I would much rather look like a child in it. <laughs> <laughs> Psychopath. Oh my god, that looks like, yeah, like you've tore half of it out of um, an old murder document and then used your blood to complete the other half. Yeah. <laughs> This is how I'm feeling right now. Bleep that. <laughs> and mine will be avant garde. You've told oh, yeah. You told me. Yeah. Like, I can't quite remember it, but it meant like outside the box or like for the creative flow or something. It's like a good excuse for not being like everything else. <laughs> not being. We like, um. We like it when our behaviour is kind of like justified with these nice, posh words. <laughs> Just do five minutes. Oh, I know. You wouldn't have finished it. <laughs> I would have just done some... <laughs> That would have just been the thinking time. Some existential crisis on the page. That does um, show the, the thinking time, like, in its prime. You know that when um, you say to a kid, right, now you've got to do a task. They're not allowed yeah. that moment to kind of get themselves together. It's like, come on, chop chop, you need to get on with it in 10 minutes, it needs to be done. It's oh. like, why does it, like, you know, what, we're not allowed to spend time contemplating and Definitely. allowing our thoughts to sell. You're like, boom, let us down. It's my non dominant thing. I just, no, honestly, it's fine. I just um, realised I hadn't even finished off my sentence. Because <laughs> so I thought I was going <laughs> 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 <And I'm laughs> <there, laughs> to pick. <laughs> my <laughs> <laughs> That looks nice and pretty. That looks well worn. <laughs> like, yeah, it does. Just have to try quickly. This shows that um, having a bit of thought process in time is not a bad thing. Oh, there was no thought. I just <laughs> yeah, I just went straight for the uh, watercolour. And, and it is. just didn't work. It was just falling off the page. Like, oh, too much water. <laughs> that shows, and again, then it's like creativity is knowing which mistakes to keep. Most definitely. Allow your oh, brain like to that. go with it. And then work out what they are. Eh? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I have a really like scrunching that hand. <laughs> Not to use it. <laughs> very, very right. stressful. Like, oh and we're done. So okay. this is this like the bake off though? Do you have to be able to hold it up without the whole thing falling apart? <laughs> Oh my god. Did you know just to save your carpet and this blue glitter? No. <laughs> Bring you to it. 
We have to improve that intro. Just pretend it's starting. Yeah, we're now. gonna start again. <laughs> Why? Why is it like this? Instead of hate, it should be love. We invite it. You don't agree, then you're the problem that we're fighting. Open up your mind, stand up, become righteous. Why? Why is it like this? Instead of hate, it should be love. We invite it. You don't agree, then you're the problem that we're fighting. Open up your mind, stand up, become righteous. Perfect. So, welcome, welcome, welcome to our. Second episode? Second official episode, or first official episode, second unofficial episode. <laughs> There's a lot of deep lore in there. We'll have to see which one comes first. But this is an episode at the start of our journey. So, the topic, Valentine's Day. Oh, swoon. Happy Valentine's Day, Lindsay. <laughs> thank you very much. Happy Valentine's Day to you. Oh, thank you. Do you celebrate Valentine's Day? That's what I want to know, first of all, because... A lot of people say it's commercialised, yeah. a lot of people have had enough, but then some people are like, ah. So how do you feel? <laughs> I feel like I would celebrate any opportunity of love, so it's like... Oh, I love that. But Valentine's Day on a whole, yeah, I do believe totally that it's lost any kind of meaning of that. And also, I wrote an article probably last year where I researched loads of, like, history behind it, and there's right. so much kind of brutal stuff like if I, I try to remember off the top of my head but I'm sure there was one tradition might have been in France or something but it wasn't you don't go around saying nice things to people on Valentine's Day you went around saying um, insulting things and that was like the the, the point of that day so there was that's I, insane yeah so it was like I found out loads of different gruesome and funny kind of traditions that had happened over the years so it kind of takes the shine off of it being like the one day that you've got to show how much you love somebody. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I can see how it's... A, but I, I love love. I love romance. So, so, of course, like, you know, Valentine's Day. Woo! <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely not? there. I'm like, God, I just love celebrating love. Yeah. And it's like, no one remembers to do it every day. <clears throat> Sorry. I know everyone... It's an, oh, you should be showing it every day, yeah. and yeah, you should be. But having that one day dedicated where neither of you have an excuse <laughs> yeah. to cancel on each other or yeah. do your own or thing. Is it just that. But that's, it, the nice thing is having the excuse to do something like yeah, like going out for a slap up meal or something you wouldn't usually do. But that oh, whole concept right. is that like a controlling way of having fun because it's like. Like I've just said, it yeah. makes sure that no one can cancel. It makes sure that mm. things go ahead yeah. and you have to... You're going to be so upset because it's Valentine's Day and you didn't make an effort and it's Valentine's Day yeah. and all my friends got roses and i got nothing so you must not love me. <laughs> he says, oh, like... Exactly. I worked in um, restaurants for, like, nearly 10 years, so working You've Valentine's seen. Day... Yeah, it was, it was lovely. There was one time when someone was meant to be proposing. They right, got yeah. the table and it was, we'd set it all up ready and they rang ahead and said they were going to be proposing. They never turned up. I know. Oh, so my word. what happened there, whether they split up before he could do it or whether he bottled it, I'm just not sure. But that table went there, went sat there, like all night, all dressed up and nobody sitting on it. Like, oh. Oh, that's actually really <laughs> sad. I can't imagine. She might I wonder what must have happened. Yeah, exactly. And that that's where the author and me, because I love just wondering, wonder what happened, and wonder all the different stories. You can stories write your that, own story. Yeah, exactly. Come up with a new one every day if you Hopefully want to. it wasn't anything, like, too painful. Hopefully they might have just got a, a better booking elsewhere than the old uh, Badger set where I was working in Cropson at the time. Which, you know what, that's quite... <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, you know, it could have been something really simple, couldn't it? Hopefully, it was. How long ago was that? Oh God, um, I wait just up until I was about twenty three or twenty four. So like, right, okay, yeah, a decade ago. They could have had so much happen in their life right oh now. All these hypothetical stories, like one of them is yeah. correct, and they are. <laughs> wow. I saw a couple of people get proposed to over the years working there. So you know, yeah, who knows how many of those are still together if they're celebrating Valentine's wow. Day still or not? Did you ever see any go wrong? I saw a few dates go wrong. Oh, really? Yeah, there was one time where this argument just started up out of nowhere and he picked his dinner up and went sh all over her and then just stormed out and she was just sat there in these white On purpose? Dinner all over her. Mmm. Yeah, that wasn't very Who's nice. Who's doing that? <laughs> That's horrible. Yeah, because it was. you could kind of tell it was one of those scenarios where she was so, like, embarrassed and you kind of got imagine? the impression that that wasn't the first time he'd done something like that. Oh, I don't I know, know what I'd do if someone the... emptied their plate onto me. I know, that is extreme, leaving. isn't it? That is really extreme. But 
that's the thing working in hospitality you do really get to see all the nitty gritty of human nature and start questioning it oh, yeah definitely <laughs> now you um I'm going to give you a break with them on your lap. Mm -hmm. At the start of this episode, you would have seen <laughs> <laughs> me try and do art with my left hand and Lindsay try and do art with her right hand. It's Valentine's themed and we gave ourselves 10 minutes to complete this task uh, using our non-dominant hand. Now, we've sent these pictures to our lovely beautiful neighbour who's just had a beautiful baby boy so we're not going to bother her too much but we have asked her to judge them judge them like, without no, no maybe it's too much pressure she just dance saying they're she too good I did explain that it was a challenge so neither of them were particularly going to be yeah. Picassos but I uh how do we have an answer the suspense I'll march around and knock on a door <laughs> take the camera with me no we do not no answer <laughs> do you know what I'm she's gonna... declined <laughs> declined to judge I am right now going to post it on social media to see yeah what other yeah, people think at the end of the episode we'll have oh you can do a vote yes yeah are you doing like a left or right type thing left or right um, try and hold them oh you've got I've already got the picture weird. oh that's even better oh. sorry guys just a bit of when we, um, <laughs> when we, when we go to broadcasting live, you can get straight on that and start voting. But as it stands, pre-recorded. I wonder if any of you who are listening to this see, have seen this post go out and voted. That's actually quite cute. Yeah, get involved, even though you're already involved. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be... How do you write a question on one of these? That's where there's, like, a cute way of doing it. A, yeah. Oh, poll. Yeah. Okay. Which is best? <laughs> oh, my God. Left. Which is funny, because the one on the left is me using my left hand, and the one on the right is you using your right hand. That's funny, because, you know, whenever... You know, if I make a tea or anything like that, I've always used my... Put mine on the left-hand side to remember that that's mine, because it's on the left. <laughs> <laughs> So cute. <laughs> or like okay. even L for Lindsay, L for left, which completely screws me up when I make anything for Lee or Lou. <laughs> I said, right, okay. Excellent. Story posted. Let's we'll see at the them. end of the show to see what that is. But yeah, I think we should not waste their time anymore. Show them this yeah, fantastic them art. Are we ready for a reveal? <laughs> Now, are you really proud? I am proud. I really like yours. I think it's like... It's <laughs> All the glitter, got glitter's that, coming off. It's got that kind of graffiti it's, look about it. Like... <laughs> and it's got the textured effect, you know. It looked like that at the last minute. And I realised I'm looking... Why am I, why am I giving it a compliment? <laughs> why am I... Why am I Bringing actually, it on, yeah, like. I realised it was that good when I... No. <laughs> this is so bad. This is I so bad. It. How did you write... Words, letters with your right hand. I know, I did say that, didn't I? I'm pretty good, like, with my yeah, hand. Yeah, this is insane. So, I don't know if I've left this bit in the video, but this is a really good exercise in seeing how a left-handed person is forced through society <laughs> to use their right hand so much. I got good at that. They gain these skills, I was, but at I'm, what expense? I was, yeah, exactly. Look at me now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing works how it should. <laughs> Both sides I of the brain are... But I, can yeah, use like, I can't, co <laughs> can't coordinate like how I should do. But I can write pretty well with my right hand, so it's all good. I think it's so cute. Hold it to the uh, camera so they can get a... Well, roses are red, violets are blue, you're multicoloured and I pick you. Exactly. Because when I write things, I'm like, well, it's talking about red and blue, so we've got to be talking about the colour. It's talking about flowers, so we've got to use the word pick as though they're a flower. I can't stand when people go rose are red, violets are blue, and then just finish it like even if it rhymes, wow. we'll finish it with something totally random. Like that's not even in the right topic. I've never <laughs> even thought about that, but you're so right. <laughs> it's talking yeah. about flowers and colour, so stick. It with all the theme. connects. Yeah, the amount of times it's like violets are red, 
No, it's all right. Vi- oh, violets are red. Roses are red. Violets yeah. are blue. I don't know. I like microwaves. Cheers, Dave, or whatever. Yeah, because yeah. I don't know. It's like, um, what? All right, whatever. Anybody could just use that. But I love how you were like, you've got to. You've got to use that. So I had to, you've got to pick be quite because of the flower. And yeah. it's like, I can't be quite particular. Particular. <laughs> it's art, my love. It can be whatever you want it to be. Like, it's poetry. <laughs> <laughs> See, my childhood, I was allowed to... How dare they? Let me use my right hand. Despite that being the most comfortable for me, how dare they? And, uh... You're really creative, naturally, though, aren't you? You, You're creative. I pride myself on enjoying art, being pretty good at art. Mm. This looks like the makings of a serial killer. I it really? did when you, first, when, you, when you first said that and I looked over and it was like brown paper and it looked like you'd smeared it with blood. I was like, wow. <laughs> smeared How it with you blood. Even managed, if that was what we were trying to do, we wouldn't have made it look that... Look, you can still see the blood splatters underneath where you've got the colour. It's not, but I try to use watercolour and watercolour doesn't work on a canvas that hasn't been primed. I'm learning this just mm-hmm. as I started and I started to panic. For some reason, I thought it'd be good to use scissors with my left hand, which I actually really enjoyed with the left hand. I think, hand I think that was, um, that was, yeah, you wanted that experience. I whereas, enjoyed it. You know, yeah. Like you say, I've used scissors with the wrong hand <laughs> many, many times. So, guys, we'll check in at the end of the episode, but leave a comment down below. I actually think yours could be one of those kind of abstract art things and get away with it. Like, if you didn't explain that was the reason behind it, if it was just up on the wall, people are like, oh, cool art. <laughs> Thank you, I suppose. <laughs> I don't know if it's worth all the blue glitter over my laptop, but... Oh, goodness. Well, it's... I'm going to see the positive gonna side. Sparkle. I'm going to give it to Nick for Valentine's Day and <laughs> see what his face is like. Oh... Oh, thank you. Yeah, happy Valentine's Day, Lee. This is, this is what you're getting. Love you, babe. <laughs> Do you know what? I might use this as the basis of something. I'm just going to put art over the top of it. Do it. We'll share that on the After Dark episodes. I was trying to put that down. <laughs> the After Dark episode. <laughs> Which will be very fun, guys. Does, buddy, buddy what printing. does anyone feel about that? Like an After Dark, more uh, explicit... Well, le- like, less family-friendly kind of thing, isn't it? We want everyone to be comfortable tuning in, but... Yeah, less... we're not showing our private parts, but we're not going <laughs> to yeah, be... Uh, we're not going to... Bleeping well, the odd swear word and being able to talk about topics that maybe are a little bit too sensitive for certain age groups, certain... Yeah, um, without putting that wall in on the front, and we don't really want to censor anything, do we? Yeah, exactly. But let's be honest. You want to hear us... Give the details. It's <laughs> <just> naked. <laughs> no, joking, we're not really. Naked. It's gone from ASMR, which I realised you must have thought I was saying BDSM. Yeah, I think. Well, it, it certainly <laughs> didn't didn't sound like it was going to be something so innocent when you explained yeah. it. I was like, oh, okay. I I do remember seeing that all go off as a craze. Now I hated it because oh, those sounds in my ears. Yeah, yeah. So just some a little bit of. Last week we were talking about ASMR doing that. I was like, let's just change it all to an ASMR camera, an ASMR channel. Oh, that and ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> now I know it's like freaky little sounds close up to the mic, like yeah. bristles brushing and like drips and gloops. And See, I thought that because you're quite uh, sensitive. Sensor- yeah, that maybe. I think, is it too sensitive? Yeah, for yeah me? it makes me like feel all icky on the That's inside. That's really interesting. Yeah. See, I, I know there's the community, there are some people that can. Maybe this is for an after dark session. <laughs> I'll save that. Oh, I don't know where you're going to go. Right, yeah, come on, let's. Right, we're on topic. It's Valentine's Day. So Love is in the air. <laughs> I'm so excited. It's like, I don't need to celebrate hey, it properly this we're, year. We're, yeah, when we're recording this pre Valentine's Day, so it's like, hit us up after oh, yeah. when, we, when we realise. Like... Just to give some context, it's the 28th of January. <laughs> we're very much in the Valentine's spirit. Hey, there's cards out and still the. Uh, in the supermarkets yeah. and stuff, you can get all and the where, stuff available. And where we are in terms of the moon cycle, um, I'm sure Venus has just gone into Taurus, maybe, and it was like, but it was bringing in the romance, basically, and saying, show yourself some love for the next few weeks. So, yeah, I'm feeling really... Uh, Really romanticised and this by is a, the world. <laughs> this is a creative state, right? This is where we're supposed to be making and creating during this yes, period. Yes, an active state, yeah. Definitely. Mm-hmm. So I thought it would be a good uh, topic to bring up because neurodivergence and love is already really made well talked about. <laughs> it's so interesting. It's so... 
And this can apply to so many different relationships. Just because you're not neurodivergent, you don't identify as neurodivergent, doesn't mean any of this won't apply to you. It's all going to apply to you because it's just the rules of dating, I and, suppose. And just to kind of interject a little bit there, partly what we're trying to uncover is, is there such thing as neurotypical or are we all divergent but suppressed in different amounts into acting a certain way? So, Definitely. you know, here's well, up with that. Is there Some people were literally... Nurtured so well that maybe yeah, none of really the spectrum well. actually shows. <laughs> or they're conforming Definitely. so hard, but you know, deep down they're like, oh God. Definitely. Me. <laughs> so there's already a lot of interest with programs such as Love on the Spectrum and Undateables. I know I love yes. watching them. And there's a lot of talk about whether they are exploitative. Yeah, because they are so funny, aren't they? That's the thing. They're hilarious. What do you think? Do they you... Like the programs themselves, like when I. I can't, I can't watch them religiously or anything because they heartwarm me to the point that I'm crying. I'm exactly like, the yeah, same. Like, in bits. Every episode I'm like, why isn't he my boyfriend? He's so <laughs> nice. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, I'm just, especially when it's like, uh, they do find like a little bit of a connection and stuff. I'm like, oh my God, that's I know. so adorable. And, you know, it'd be lovely if everyone could find that kind of love, isn't it? But, yeah, I wonder about the exploiting side of things because a lot of the time these people don't mean to be hilarious and we're thinking it's hilarious yeah. so that does kind of it, suggest that <laughs> i'm i've gone very much back and forth on it since these kind of programs mm. started around i don't know about 10 years ago now they started really like the looking have been going into, on it's been for going a, a while yeah, there's I people that are married on it and yeah, stuff like oh, that. yeah. <laughs> and at the start i used to watch people and they'd be like oh isn't that really but then you watch something like love island or i'm a celebrity yeah, and I we suppose. exploit the re- reality tv is that's what it's based yeah, on yeah and in my opinion if you stop anyone who's you know through dis- a disability not being able to participate in laughing at themselves suppose... then that's almost not letting them be normal part of the human condition is that we laugh at each other we yeah, take the yeah, mick yeah. out of each other yeah. we find each other funny it when it becomes offensive when you suddenly go oh you shouldn't Ooh, laugh at that you can't laugh <laughs> yeah. at that oh sorry yeah. I didn't mean that then suddenly it is offensive exactly <laughs> and suddenly you're othering that person mm, mm. so I'm all for it as long as the person that is involved is consenting yeah, to totally. for their life to be shown yeah. so some of these people like they're like internet celebrities now they've got such a yeah, big following yeah. for how and a lot of the time as well, these people um, that are on the spectrum or whatever, it, you know, even if you've kind of had a disability and grown up with it, you're a lot more transpa- transparent and like open because mm. you've faced those judgments, Definitely. you're over it type thing. So, yeah, I can't remember where I really what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that, but, <laughs> That's completely fine. I'm sure you'll f- think of it where you were as we move along. <laughs> That's going to happen a lot. It's yeah, just... it's going to happen all of the time. <laughs> ADHD, guys, what do you expect? <laughs> yeah, but it's is, it is just that whole thing that it's a learning curve for everybody that being so blunt and being transparent and just saying what you think, Yes, it, it's funny, but it's also, you know, if we were all like that, then maybe yeah. the world would get on a little bit easier because there wouldn't be all these hidden, hidden agendas and second-guessing. If you find that you're, you have social anxiety about whatever mental health issue that you experience say that you've got a lot of anxiety in meetings or whatever the second you address this to the room i'm really sorry i may struggle with this i have anxiety just bear with me (laughs) watch yourself fly through the meeting yeah and be absolutely cool with it because everyone understands anxiety everybody Mm. understands being embarrassed everyone understands pressure and no one in that room unless they're a complete yeah, yeah. It's going to laugh at you and make you feel worse. But the person that does laugh at you and makes you feel worse is the person that's also struggling with an inner issue. This is what I've found. That Definitely. Is, that behaviour is a big indicator. And lacking the self-awareness to realise that they are feeling uncomfortable because that is something they Striking witness in themselves. Home. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, just going back to the, the undateable snow, but, but not quite. Um, I'm, work, <laughs> I'm working with a student or with a person that's, um, that's got Tourette's. And I know that that is such a huge issue for him when it comes to dating. Right. Because it gets worse when he's nervous anyway. So when he's, like, talking about it yeah. and then his tics are kind of kicking off because of the anxiety behind it. And for me, I've tried to explain to him, for me, I I see that as, like, quirky. I think, again, coming from I'm already neurodivergent, I've already got this list of things. Yeah. 
it's like I would I'd be like oh I'd honestly don't worry about it you know it's I know what you, you mean, you're yeah. having this ticket it's like I don't even see that as like an issue but for him it's so huge and I've been trying to kind of support him that yeah some girls will laugh and it'll put them off yeah but definitely. it won't put everybody off like some people will think it's one of the qualities about you that they absolutely love it's part of you you know definitely you may and We've started kind of laughing at it a little bit instead because it'll, it'll we kind of tick vocal and then say sorry and I'm like please yeah. don't apologise about ticking man no, like, no, you yeah. know it's like but we've started trying to have a bit of a giggle about it now like I like I said to him the other day it sounds like you're playing, playing the piano in the back and he started laughing and That's said one, <laughs> one of his mates had said that and then he'd been working at a farm and he was saying he was talking to the guinea pigs like <laughs> And I was like, yeah, just let them all out when you're with the guinea pigs. So I oh, don't that's know if it was so cool. like kind of setting him off. But, you know, for the Undateables, I think it did raise a lot of awareness around hidden disabilities as such like Tourette's, Definitely. which has actually got way more common after lockdown in teens, I think because anxieties have gone up. Definitely. And it's one of those things that people are really embarrassed about to date, but then people are like, oh, what's wrong with you? There's nothing, nothing wrong with you. Right, yeah. Think. No, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's good for the exposure so people... Because how many people to general how on average how many people do people know that have Tourette's like how often yeah, it's it's got it it is well, a very rare funnily enough I didn't realise that I had these cycles in my teens where I was doing these uh, facial kind of like twitches type thing and I'd, but I'd not long got a Game Boy so my mum and dad came down on me that I'd been playing too much on this Game Boy it was causing me to do <laughs> right. these twitches and it's not until now I'm in the work I am and I've looked into oh, Tourette's know. that it comes on in the That's teens it's what common, it was <laughs> it's common in girls with um, ADHD and autism like uh, it's just a common thing to happen. You have two cycles of it and then you go out of it. That's one of the most common things to happen. Not everybody then goes on to develop Tourette's That's really disorder. That's really interesting. And now I'm like, oh, I literally had these two bouts of it and then it, you know, grew out of it kind yeah. of thing. But it makes you think, actually, my brother had a few mates that used to do these facial kind of things that now I look at and I'm like, they were ticks. They were in the oh, teens. Oh, definitely. They yeah. were, you know, a neurodivergent group type thing between them and they were going through it. But I think, again, it just comes with awareness, doesn't it? The more we know about it, Hands you can recognise it, accept it, it's fine, it's not that unusual, you know. Exactly. Smile about it. <laughs> and I think that's worth mentioning because ne- neurodivergence, as like everyone, struggles with dating as in forming a relationship maintaining re- maintaining a relationship mm-hmm. for so many reasons and also ending a relationship the uh, poor attachment skit style or if you're maybe insecure with who mm. you are as yourself and an empath i think one of the big things is being an empath because you like put yourself in their shoes and then you're like oh, i don't want to be causing this yeah hurt. I mean, that's with ending it. I was thinking when you first started listing those things, what was it, forming relationships, maintaining relationships and ending them? Yeah. Wow. I mean, being a people pleaser, <laughs> trying to form Most a relationship. definitely. I am. I will give you anything. Here is my soul. Take it all. <laughs> it's, it's really, and it's, again, like I said, everyone experiences these problems. But if you have a neurological difference in the way you process information, mm. it can get in the way of, being able to communicate yeah, and to build a solid foundation where you know where each of you stand, you understand what your goals are within the relationship, their mutual goals as well as separate goals, and you work towards them. I think quite often we get into this rut if you... It's been reported loads mm. that it feels like you're speaking a different language. And there was actually a study by... I need to get the name right. <laughs> I'm like... I'm getting this correctly. When you just said that, like my reaction's like talking a different language because I don't know whether I wonder whether it's just a female male thing anyway that um, females are driven by emotion and men are driven more by action and kind of like behaviour so you're already starting on that crisscross of a page where you're investing some kind of hidden meaning into what you're saying and they're investing another and exactly the actual message that you're trying to get across gets lost definitely like, the human condition and being able to communicate is such a complex one it's not black and white there's no words. like one thing fits all yeah. it's just because two people said the exact same words doesn't necessarily no, mean they meant the same that. thing. It can be about tone, it's about Body intent, language, all even these energy. different things. Yeah, There's so definitely. many subtle... Yeah, I feel like... Because I, I did a speech and language course, but it was a long, long, long time ago, but there was a, st- a statistic, and I'm sure that it was... We 
only 10% 10, 10 of what we understand comes from the verbalisation of the words. Right, like yeah. 90% comes from everything else. So the most what we take from someone else's speech is physical... Just how their facial movement. expression. Yeah. But then you come to the neurodivergent side of things where you might not recognise people's facial expressions Definitely. or you might over-recognise them. Yeah. Cause my, my face is always pulling a million faces, as we'll see on this, this camera. We're <laughs> looking back like, what's your face doing? <laughs> so if you're no, sensitive yeah, I know what you mean. To, to facial expressions, just when I'm confused, I can go like that because I'm, I'm so concentrated no, yeah. on what you're saying. So it's like... You don't even have to say anything for the message to get lost. Yeah. Like you no, said, tones, body language, facial expressions. I've got, like, a bit of fluff, like, up my nose. <laughs> I realise this sure? is so unprofessional. Or is it? Wait, well, I can just feel it as you talk, and I'm like, I can't listen to anything you're saying until I get this. Maybe it's... Um, um, uh, oh, I was going to say, maybe it was just, like, a paranoia of, I'm going to film the whole thing, and then... <laughs> no, I actually got a bogey somewhere. <laughs> I'd tell you if you had a big bogey hanging out your nose. It's just a... You can feel it wobbling around. I can feel the hair. This is my... I do this every night. I put my cream on. I go to get into bed. And as I lay there, trying to get to sleep as quickly as I can before he starts snoring, <laughs> I suddenly feel every bit of hair, like, stuck to the cream on my face. Oh, God. And I'm having to, like, pull my hand out the cover to, like, fix it. And then as I put it down, I'm, like... Up. Blowing up another bit oh, of fluff, and I'm like, "How many? Has my cat been asleep on my pillow or something? Oh, what is happening?" No. And I, last night, no word of a lie, three hours, I'm picking, feeling like I'm picking bits of hair off. Me. Yeah, yeah, just just like... cannot sleep. He's been, he's started snoring and stopped snoring like ten times over, and I just give up. I must have woke up about half nine, like. <laughs> What is life? <laughs> I kept looking every time. This I, today. This was this literally morning. last night. Yeah, this morning as I woke up. And, go to and you were, up. like, totally on time today, and I was, like, totally not ready today. <laughs> I felt like I was You're, very late. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, I was expecting you between two and three. So, like, when you messaged it, I was like, oh, I was like, oh my God. How, ready. how are you with your timekeeping skills? <laughs> Must say, <laughs> mine aren't that great. I'm so you glad shouldn't, that you're on the same page with me there. Though. You shouldn't judge me by what time I get there. Do you know what? I, I saw this. Judge um, me by how great a time you have when that, I am there. Fantastic. <laughs> Don't judge me by the time we get there. Judge me by the, the time we spend together. I um, I did read this somebody's um, Facebook post once that said, if you can't be on time, you failed at life. And I was like, wow. like, And I just yeah. thought, I, I understand, though, it looks like you cannot get your act together. You just couldn't have... You obviously didn't care, or else you would have sorted it. It's totally not like that, though, is it? I just, it's like, yeah. time is... Time is, that is some... It's hard, it's hard, though, isn't it? Because I, I get why people see it as a direct... Because it's capitalism. Yeah. It doesn't care at all about your feelings. It just cares about you going to work and yeah. putting money into being the system. Hour, 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 like being rigid, scheduled. But, um, but people have took that on as, like, a sign of being polite. And I, and I do get it, like... Like I do sometimes. I understand. I know that, when I've got to try and be on time. Yeah. I will try and try and try and still end up. Definitely. <laughs> there's a, I think yeah, there's a, it is always there. You know, whether you're trying to like get to work or if you're going to meet a friend, I do see them as two completely different things. Yeah. My friends, people, are, I understand that people have time and it's valuable to them, and I've got no right to try and take that away. But you're not trying to. That's but that's the thing. You're genuinely yeah. not trying to do that. And this is where I maybe struggle, because I try and make sure that I apologise. I'm so sorry that you... And I've been told that you should change that to thank you for your patience. Thank you for your yeah, patience because, for waiting for me. Yeah. But I find that really, like, self-absorbed. Oh, yeah. Thank you for waiting for me. I'm waiting yeah. for the other person to reply, being it, like, I wasn't waiting for you. I was living my life, and you turned up yeah, when you wanted. I get, um, <laughs> I get why it's a change away from the sorry and the negative... So yeah. I mean, we'll get onto that with the habits thing. But it is, no, like, yeah, it is, it is tied. Stay in. tuned. There you go. There's your cliffhanger. Stay tuned. <laughs> it's, 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 <laughs> although the habits one might come out. It might have been happening. You've already heard <laughs> about <laughs> You've already watched the habits one. I've been a producer for two whole weeks, guys. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. But, um, but yeah, that's why they're saying to change the sorry to a thank you. But you, yeah, I see what you mean. No, like, yeah. Thank you for your patience. Sounds like they've sat and waited and it's like an interview yeah. or something like thank you for waiting like that's what a bloody dentist said that's what the dentist said to me this morning thanks for your patience I thought how do you know I've been patient how do you know I've not been out there <laughs> <them?"> <laughs> 
yeah, to I work. Been, thanks I'm for not, waiting. I was fine, but <laughs> well, I had no choice. I had booked this appointment. I'm just going to walk I'm off usually, to you five minutes late. Yeah. <laughs> I'm usually highly impatient, actually. So don't thank me for something that you're assuming I'm giving you. No, definitely. <laughs> I was literally about to go on to a habit then and realise we're on love. I love and Valentine's Day. <laughs> so and talking different languages. Sorry, I'm, the language of love I'm should not, no no hold. <laughs> What are we doing? So you know what? Ignore what I'm doing. What are you doing? <laughs> we were talking about getting our wires crossed, weren't we? In love. Oh, okay. Yes. And to be honest, that that I'd like to end on a positive with the wires crossed. I don't know if we're ending that segment and moving on to the next bit, but <laughs> I feel like... before we started this, she's like, "By the way, take the lead. I'll jump in when I want." She's like, da 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 da. Yeah. Don't know if you finished with that. Come yeah, on, hurry up. Finish with that, but can I, can, I, can I just say I feel like if. You genuinely love somebody and the words are failing you. Yes. Go back to just having a good old hug for a minute because then you oh. realise, well, then you, you stood yes. there and you're hugging and you're reconnecting and you realise, oh, my God, all the words just fall away because you're not actually angry with each other. You're frustrated because you don't understand each other. That You know, like... and Yes, yeah, definitely. It, it, it just shows the difference between whether you're falling out because the person is vicious. Because yeah. if, you know, if it's a genuine yeah, argument, definitely. the hug's not going to work. Come here. <laughs> <laughs> you absolute psycho. Oh, Get away that. from me. No, I've done that myself. I'm like, all you need to do is give me a hug. Just stop shouting at me. But then he's actually tried it. And I'm like, don't touch me right now. And it's like, God, yeah, you know what? You're making it more... Di- what do you, what do you want, Steph? I thought it was uh, off. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. I think, what do you want? That, that's the, isn't that what women mostly complain about, about men? Like, I think... You don't know what you want. <laughs> do you know what? I think it's anyone that is just paying attention to life. Because how are you supposed to just be like, yep, yes to this, no to this, off we go. Life is hard, man. Well, if I'm in not... a different mood every day. Yeah, like, exactly. You know, some days I wake up and I'm literally like, I don't want to see the world. I just want to stay in the cocoon that is my living room all day, the safety net of it. And then the oh, next yeah, day... with my curtains like, closed. Yeah. Oh, but then the next day, we've only judged you doing, because that's all I can cope with, <laughs> auditory-wise, the same kind of, like, sad. But then the next day, I'm like, oh, my goodness, there's a whole world out there. I'm going to go for a walk. I'm fresh mm. I'm going to go and see my friends. I'm gonna, and, I, and I want that. So it's yeah. like, yeah, how can you possibly know who you possibly are? <laughs> we've got no idea who we are. And unfortunately, until you get a good idea of who you are, you're going to be awful in a relationship so maybe the relationship thing is not necessarily all always about communication in terms of words because you're not always going to be able to understand each other in terms of explain how you no know. definitely i think but actions it's more, actually well, it's the speak support. a lot more yeah, yeah definitely that, you're that, saying you're sorry but where are you after saying sorry yeah and yeah just the environment to be yourself if you see what i mean like so yes, for example I, I i read this thing and it was so beautiful it said you know when you plant a um a tree or a well just a plant a house plant say and it's growing as it's growing you don't start going right i want you to move that Sorry. branch slightly right. there and i want you to yeah. grow in this direction and i want you to actually i don't like the direction you're growing in you it's just got that natural flow you just of... watch it and you go wow look at it i'm caring for it i'm watering it and look at it doing its thing it's growing you yeah. don't like oh, even no, if it starts grow. growing like through a house or something you're still like well, well, on, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah well like your plants that you've got on your windowsill they start wrapping around each other and you're like oh like you know it's like oh no don't do that oh so, like, <laughs> maybe i am just far oh. too my emotions you've got oh the plants like, oh Oh, honestly, my little aloe, when it, like, wraps its spine around the plant next to it, I'm like, oh, they're holding hands, like... <laughs> but, That's so cute. But you don't look after something and nurture it to start telling it how to grow. And no, the, definitely. And the other thing as well is, like, a sunset, where it's like you're watching a beautiful sunset and then you start going, oh, no, hold on a minute, soften the orange a bit, yeah, no, bit, bit... You just exactly. don't. So why in a relationship is it so, like, oh, well, don't say that and don't do... Just... No, to the person, provide the space. Well, have, you know, have the conversations and cuddles and <laughs> conversations and cuddles and yeah. <laughs> However, if you neurologically have something that impacts your style of communication, mm-hmm. the way that you process information, how does it affect you? So, it has been shown that neurodiverse relationships in which one or both partners identify as neurodivergent can be amongst the strongest of partnerships. Mm-hmm. We've seen it. However, neurological differences, as I've said, present unique challenges, particularly related to communication. 
And My Hill and Jekyll 2015, sounding like I'm back at university, <laughs> reported that partners often feel that they are speaking different languages and that their communication styles are incompatible. And this causes significant stress and frustration because this incongruent paradigm that you both have, meaning that I have a frame of reference and I'm struggling to step out of it to consider yours. Mm. And that is something that people who would identify as neurodivergent regularly struggle with. This, um, some people are very good with self-awareness and I think that's something that I pride myself on. I don't know if I needed that five years of university to really get that <laughs> self-awareness, but... <gasps> Oh, it's here. I'm aware of every awful thing that I do and say. It's but really that, good for you. That's the thing, though. When you're, when you're a bit... When you're really, really self-work and that makes you too apologetic, though, because then you're very, very quick to say, oh, that was me, yeah. I did that wrong. Oh, actually, yeah, maybe I should have done that better. So awareness is one thing, and then security is the other. So having the awareness to be like, oh, I messed up there, but having the, the security enough to be like, I apologised... Mm. I said I wouldn't do it again. I don't need to, I don't know, act inappropriately yeah. in a way that, or stress about it too much. Yeah. And I think that's where I struggle. I've got great self-awareness mm. and my attachment style is very insecure. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, navigating, navigating these things can be a bit difficult. Mm. How do you feel about... Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> anyone watching this will be laughing because relationships have not exactly been renowned as my strong point. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, I am, I know what you I, mean. Am, I am that typical um, neurodivergent, thirty, nearly thirty-six year old, success absolutely smashing it. You know, like in my career and like all that side of things. Yeah, and then it, but then you look at my life overall, and it hasn't done the traditional land landmarks of right, yeah, getting married and meeting somebody, and it becoming like an ongoing relationship. So. Yeah, hearing that, that it's the that communication is the big barrier, because certainly I look back in my 20s and think, oh, God, you know, maybe that didn't need to be an argument. Maybe yeah. that was either me taking it to heart or the whole thing being misunderstood from the start and Definitely. then it's ended up as an argument type thing. I think a lot of the, the, the problems that you face, they all relate back to communication and not necessarily that you need that to fix it. But this idea of having that good, strong ability to communicate is the foundation you need to be able to build the rest of it. Yeah, from the start. From the start. I suppose that's the thing, that if you meet somebody and at the start, you're not who you are, so you're not communicating exactly. who you are. But then my biggest thing has always been, I suppose, that I've always been really, really driven and I have always had these goals, so it doesn't matter what the, right, yeah. the relationship is such... The goal has never been in any of my relationships to get married and have kids. So in a lot of respects, the goal has never been a joint goal. Right, OK. So whether that's kind of the... We're going to realise now where all, where all my relationships have gone wrong live live on a podcast session, but... <laughs> <laughs> Let's get deep, so deep. Uh, yeah. Let's reveal all the uh, dirty laundry. No. <laughs> but it, no, but it does change the kind of, like, focus of a relationship when you're not the... Per like... A lot of people yeah. get with each other and the talk is, oh, do you want kids? What Definitely. age do you want kids? When do you want to get married? When are we buying a house and we move in together? But my talk has always been, when do you want, where in the world do you want to travel together? You know, where where in the world do you want to have a holiday home? Yeah. Like, my, it's always been a different goal that's then always ended up just my goal, <laughs> not their goal, and then the relationship, obviously. Yeah, which is weird, because I bet there's so many blokes out there that start the dating, and go, oh, I don't want to get married. It's just yeah, that, oh, that, oh, my God. I hear it so many yeah. times. And then, then as it gradually goes on, what do you mean you don't want kids? Well, well, even me, though. I thought, you just, meant, I thought <laughs> you just meant with your ex. I didn't know you meant, like, now you've met me, even, that you were still going to feel that way. Even though you said it, like, I didn't know you meant it. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, having these... And again, not having the same goal isn't always a bad thing. Not at all. If you've got your mutual goals and your separate goals, yeah. but how are they aligning? And how are you communicating your needs around them? Yeah, I suppose, because my, my main goal is always has always been to feel secure. Right, to yeah. not have those kind of worries of where the next paycheck's coming from, to not being able to cover this, to yes. work my car goes wrong and I've not got enough money. So my goal has always been to create that security. So then I suppose in the the thing I don't then communicate in a relationship is how important it is for me to feel secure. And ironically, in the past, a lot of my relationships, they are literally just been insecure messes. So it doesn't align with what no. I am trying to 
achieve for myself, which is no, ultimate definitely. feeling safe. But then the ADHD, and especially being undiagnosed for so, so many years, I was always such a thrill seeker that it was yeah. probably me self-sabotaging a lot of the time because it would get settled and get... And then I'd be like, is this... Have we gone off each other or is this it? Yeah. Is this what being in a relationship is? And then yeah. I'd find, find the red button, like... <laughs> I know what you mean. I think it's important to highlight, especially in ADHD relationships, this, your like for most things, your dopamine levels do not dopamine work the lot, same yeah. as they normally would. Your brain's an addict for dopamine. It's sniffing for it. All exactly. The time. <laughs> and when you first meet someone and you really fancy them, then that's that dopamine hit. Da, 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 yeah, da, da, yeah. Da, it's that thrill. Yeah. So intoxicating. And what happens during that period of time is the second, is the love chemical forms. Oxid. Tosin? Is that the one? That's that the, the love. That's the one that builds the security yeah. and the love. And well, if during that dating time yeah. you haven't solidified a very strong relationship, that is where it will show. So yeah, yeah. you will either have a really strong love or you have a very unhealthy attachment to each other where you don't seem to be able to mm. leave each other. And that is where a neurodivergent Different. individual yeah. will often find themselves. Because if you struggle to communicate, then there's you certain things... Your needs, are, your needs aren't being met. You don't know how to communicate. Exactly. You don't even know how to communicate that something's wrong. Yeah. Never mind what's wrong and or even how if, to explain what's wrong. Even if you try and explain, maybe you can come off misunderstood mm. or to the other person. I, I, I know one thing that's when you're answering questions, and I used to get quite annoyed thinking that the person... That I was trying to talk to wasn't listening or taking me seriously just yeah. kind of looking off but realising that that's how a lot of people deal with triggering topic, topics yeah it's to look their, away yeah their processing mm. time is a lot longer so yeah. to give that a space and to understand that this person isn't unist- uninterested and not listening mm. they are genuinely trying to process the information and respond accordingly and often when you well, well, not you, me, <laughs> when I'm like, oh, come on, then give me an answer. What, are you ignoring me? Yes, I don't realise that I'm making that worse during that point because I'm not allowing the space for that process to happen. So there's a load of different things. Timing. When are you trying to have a conversation? Mm. When are you trying to... Is it late at night when you've just sat down and you're trying to do something? Because I know that's when I come alive. Well, And the thing is with the ADHD brain, though, do you find that if something suddenly pops into your mind and starts niggling away, it's going to come out there and then? So exactly. it's like, oh yeah, fine, and a good time. But it's yeah. the timing is, I've, I'm trying to go sleep and I can't get this thing off me, so exactly. I'm going to start an argument just before bed. <laughs> it's exactly. <laughs> hey, babe, you know uh, when you said that the other day? <laughs> like, and, exactly. and for a man, it was like, what do you mean when I said that the other day? <laughs> it's like, well, it's just yes. popped into my head and it really hurt my feelings. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. I'll start thinking about something and I'll be bringing it up and you can see on the face, like, why are you bringing it up at this time? But in your face, you're like, when do well, I bring it up? Then? I've tried to talk about this many times and actually upon reflection, if I think about it, I try to bring it up the drive home from somewhere or <laughs> just about to go to... But you know the times yeah. when he's like... I really don't want to talk about this right now. But the thing is, but nobody wants to talk about it ever. Right, so ever. Like, yeah, what are you exactly. going to do in a good time? You may as well wait till you're already having a bad Exactly. Time. So that's the important thing with timing, is to make sure that you're addressing someone at the correct time or trying to, if it's not the right time, say to them, when is a good time for you? And also, if you're the other person, to not avoid having that conversation. Well, but there has to be a that, time. That when they say, when you say, you say, well, there's got to be our time. So sometimes it's easy just to, yeah, Definitely. well, we'll talk about it another time, and then it doesn't get spoken exactly. up. But then the thing's going to keep repeating exactly. because it's not being addressed. And how often do you try and bring that up? And it's like, oh, we don't want to bring that up now. That's too yeah, sensitive. Too, we don't, we don't yeah. want to talk about well, that. You're going back for. Yeah, we're having a good time now, but it's, like, but it's going to it's going to rear its head at some point. Exactly. I mean, just it's kind of on the same topic, but something I've struggled with is, and it might be an attack the attachment style thing as well but if there's an argument in the relationship is I'm the kind of person that wants to sort it immediately because I'm highly upset yes. brother. when it's first happened I can't cope I need yeah. that, that emotion dealing with it so that I can carry on the rest of my day yeah, and everything just, else is ordered in my brain yeah, not, yeah. but um, oh sorry I brain <laughs> no 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 not at all I was just wondering like how you know, do you name do you name yourself from experience right now? But it's just one of those things that um, when your partner like needs space, when there's yes. something's got a bit hot, 
I need it sorting. Partner needs space. I'm exactly and the same. Learning that was a real key thing because, and him and him learning that about me as well because it was like he's trying to create space for the situation. I'm seeing that as oh right, running away, are you? Let's deal with it. Following space creating, yeah. following it's that kind of thing of going into somebody's safe space and then them recreating the safe space and you're going back into it. Exactly. But once I explained that, that it's just how I feel that you know I'm not coping and. Please don't just storm off from me. If you kind of say, I need five. Exactly. That feels like you're communicating that with me then. That's and communication. I'm, yeah. That's good communication. Yeah. We and like it, that. But it feels like I'm in on the decision then that you're taking Definitely. five, I can take five kind of thing, yes. rather than they've just gone and then it's like, oh, I, need to, I just still need to sort it and I don't know why they've gone. So I do think that, yeah, in terms of the communication, it's almost like if those things are happening you can find ways to get around it still you can still have completely different styles of dealing with something in the moment yeah. and then it's coming back to it isn't it uh, definitely and i think that goes on to the next topic mm. which is mind reading oh god <laughs> expecting the other person to know what you're thinking it's not a thing <laughs> i don't know whether this comes under the same thing or whether it's or whether it's separate or what but um like the expectations thing so turning up and in your head yep. it's like I've got a bag of bagels we're going to have the best time yep. we're going to turn up we're going to do this and then you turn up and that doesn't happen and then there's all this added wow we were meant to be doing it this well who said we were meant to be doing it nobody Definitely. you put that on yourself exactly and, and then it's like you almost expect that well you should yeah. know why I'm so upset because we were meant to be having this breakfast that I've brought oh, I, did I didn't so, know that yeah. or whatever but I've done it loads. You know, when you start in a relationship and you just assume, well, we're at the start of the relationship. We spend every second together. And you kind of... And that first weekend you're not together, it's like... <laughs> Wait, what did I do wrong? I thought we were obsessed with each other. And that's where I've always struggled. A lot of people can kind of... They understand that that is a normal part of a relationship. I am looking at that other person thinking, you think exactly the same as me and yet you're doing nothing about it. Yeah, like, and, and I, I screw live. myself over. Yeah, yeah. It's it's difficult, and I understand how no one would want to see, participate I, in that. That's annoying. So see, I get actually um, in our arguments sometimes it's that because I do a lot of um, maybe they're thinking this, maybe they're thinking that, maybe they're thinking the other, right. and I'll have this whole range of things that they might be thinking, and whether that's helpful or not, I don't know because in some respects it does make me more aware, but on the other hand, I get called an overthinker a lot because. Exactly. Why you're never ever gonna fathom what they are yeah. thinking? You literally can't yeah. because you've ne- not walked in their shoes. You've got no idea yeah. of their thought pattern, their experience, anything that's informing it. And yeah. even if you've been able to predict someone's actions time and time again over, yeah, the idea of you know. knowing exactly what they're no, thinking can't, isn't. Can't. But I think yeah, it's and it's about realizing that the other way round, isn't it? Yes. That just because you're feeling hurt. Now, I could sit next to my fella, <laughs> seething, and if I didn't tell him, I don't think he'd really notice. I know, you know exactly and, what you mean. And I think even if I gave him signs, he might still be, be like, you're all right, baby. Yeah, but he wouldn't be thinking, oh, I know, she must be fuming. You know, no, like, no, exactly the same. So I think, yeah, don't, don't assume the other person knows ever. Yeah, that's then, actually made me think of a really funny stuff. <laughs> it's to do with this. So the first podcast that I tried to edit this, you might never see it, maybe. Well, it's hours. a secret. Hours. Oh I got halfway through, I'd spent days on it, and all of a sudden it deleted everything I'd just done and left all the bit that was left that I hadn't edited yet. What? And it was just as Nick was coming down the stairs and coming to chill, so I was, I'd was i lost my time to do anything. Oh, my God. And my brain just broke, and I sat there, and I just closed the laptop, and I was like, oh, my God. And he comes down, and he's like, you are right? And I was like, oh, my God. And he went, okay. And I went, what do you mean, okay? And he was like, what do you mean? And I was like, right. Yeah, so he's got yeah. no idea of what's that. going on. And I'm just going to explain it to you, right? All the work I've been doing for the last three days is just gone. And when I've seemed extremely stressed, you go, okay, that's not okay. And I just looked at him, do you understand why I'd want to punch you in the throat right now? And he's like, yeah, yeah I guess so. And I don't know if he's just saying yeah, that to be is. like, yeah, you're a bit too much, I'm just going to agree with you to shut up. <laughs> but... <laughs> Thankfully, I'm getting a lot better, and I was able to tell him about this is why I want to punch you in the throat, which isn't a good <laughs> thing to say, let's be honest. That's not the best way to be about things. But 
I don't mean it. I'm just trying to express that I'm so frustrated and angered with technology. Yeah, if we could have a little screen above your head, yeah. he'd have walked down the stairs and saw on that screen meltdown mode yeah. on its way and known immediately, oh my yeah. God, like, are you okay? And his response would have been, are you okay? But And to be honest, if he'd have said, if you're okay, that would annoyed me as well. Yeah, you'd have been, I'm doing okay. Yeah. Look at my face, don't look okay. Yeah, yeah, so it would, nothing would have, been, would have been the right thing to do. And that's the point. <laughs> so even if you can mind read. Exactly. You it's just, not going to help. <laughs> the best you can do is work on your own reactions in your own self. Yeah, Sometimes we get that. stressed and that's natural. Apologise. I'm sorry that that happened. Mm. And understand that the people that are close to you will take stressful things out on you because they can. It's easier. Yeah. You're a familiar person. But I mean, to not take the mic. Yes. Foot. And it's and it is like you say, maybe well, obviously they must have thought that. I really think that there's nothing obvious at all about the way people think because right, yeah. you, you know, you just cannot fathom the way that somebody somebody else is going to apply that action then think I don't know, you know, like I just hear people getting so twisted up sometimes and worrying about people's. I know what you mean. Yeah, what they're thinking, and it's like you're never gonna know. <laughs> and and exactly. even if you did, it wouldn't it wouldn't solve anything because you still wouldn't understand in the context of what they were thinking. Exactly. <laughs> it's nuts, and um, I think we've basically covered everything. Do you know what the one thing that is there? Mm. It's very highly reported amongst neurodivergent couples. And that is defensiveness when it comes to communicating. Again, it goes back to the bad communication. Someone tries to bring something up with you, you instantly get defensive. And the multiple reasons that you can be doing this, and this is misreading cues, mm -hmm. you could have past uh, trauma that's not resolved, you could have a really strong need to defend your decisions and your actions because you've had to do that for so long. Yeah, that's kind of what's coming into my mind. That I think yeah. as, as a neurodivergent person, you've... You've advocated for yourself so, so long. So long, yeah, that it's like, what do you mean? And it's you've jumped you've jumped to the defensive Definitely. point because that's where you've always had to fight it is, from. It has become a habit, for sure. Mm. Uh, also feeling criticised um, and just communication and issues in general. But this, is, this impacts connectedness and the ability to form effective communication. Like, without... If you're constantly defensive and not actually receiving a message... Well, you can't grow from it. You can't you reflect know, no. if you've deflected it. How many you times have you gone into... Right, I just need to say this is how I feel. Within that first sentence, their response isn't one of like, oh, OK, I understand what you mean. Yeah. It is straight, well, you're this, you're that, you're this, you're that. And it's yeah, like... And that's... It's very... It's, it's, a, it's debilitating. Yeah. I don't know how to do life when... I'm being made to feel that I'm being... I'm doing something I'm not because it's made the other person feel a certain way because they've been triggered by a certain topic. <laughs> trigger, trigger, I trigger, might trigger. not have... <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you're just... Do you know what I think... Reacting, part of, triggering. And I don't, I don't think we've actually mentioned this, but rejection sensitivity as being part Ooh. of the ADHD... Um, yeah, spectrum definitely. Is Give it to me. That's something that I... When I first read about... I have rejection sensitivity dysphoria and all kind of yeah. being sensitive to rejection in general. I literally cried my heart out because I I had never related to something so much in my life, oh, and it man. suddenly helped so much make sense that I'd taken so many things so badly, whereas other people just seemed to kind of cruise through those Amen. events, and it was like it did make me think, oh, I'm not um, just a weak-minded person, or right, I'm yeah. not just this kind of like fragile shell that gets upset really easily it's just the way that i process things but then i think that is such a huge that has impacted on relationships and possibly does across the adhd board being sensitive oh, yeah. to rejection anyway and that doesn't mean rejecting in the traditional sense that can literally mean somebody saying oh look at that girl's hat over there that's nice and then in your mind you're thinking well what's wrong with my hat yeah, and it's you know they're they're just and it's taking it where yes. you're automatically like well that must be a sign I'm Definitely. not good enough because that's why they've pointed out and you're not even thinking of it like Definitely. that. Definitely, it goes back to that frame of reference, struggling to step out of your own and being aware to see someone like, else's. I'm aware yeah. now that I do that, but then that's what I was kind of meaning earlier when you're saying that then you can become a victim of your own awareness because then you're thinking oh maybe they didn't mean that offensively <laughs> yeah. it's just me being sensitive but actually maybe they did mean it you know maybe you should have been offended and I think don't just of... being aware of your own attachment style is just very useful you're not gonna I don't think 
some people might very much disagree with me, but I believe that your attachment style is very solidly ingrained as a child and it's very difficult mm. to... I also believe that you can have your attachment style completely ruptured by, like, a death of a mother or something yeah. as you've got older or whatever, yeah, and it yeah. can happen. You could have a great childhood and then boom. Your attachment style is so deep and ingrained into who you are, it's like... It's part of your DNA in the way that I like yeah. to see it. It's well, so deep in the way that it controls you mm. and makes you Cause decide things. And, well, I've said about my independence before, haven't I? And again, with relationships, I'm quite independent in the relationship. And it's only been probably this year, well, towards the back end of last year, that I read something about toxic independence. Yes. And I've started to realise that my need for that feeling of me not needing anybody, and that's not, I, you know... I'd like to think that doesn't come through in my relationships as a cold thing. I want you, I don't need you. That's how I always, I want to be with you. I don't need to be with you, I right, want yeah. to be with you, you know. And that, that for me was always a, the most purest thing that I could give you, that yeah. I actually want to be here, I don't need to be here. But then actually, when I started reading into toxic independence, it made me think maybe I have had this barrier up to mean. ever being vulnerable because I don't like being vulnerable and it does always seem that any time that I am I get stabbed anyway I know so what you mean like, oh, yeah great you know I showed my belly a surrender for once and then I got kicked in it so you know why would I even go down that route but again that's that energy isn't it that it's all it's okay. like oh I'm, you know you're going to get what you put out so if you're worried you're going to get it back definitely well I don't know if we should check the winner. It's already 56 minutes. The oh, camera per- will end up turning off at some yeah, point. Yeah, no, that's perfect to, start so. to check the winner. <laughs> what does the winner have to do, by the way? Or is, it, is there a... Who knows? Oh, God, maybe that's what we can start to put out to these guys. Like, what, what do you want us to have to do as our forfeit or something like that? Has anyone even voted? No one's even voted. <laughs> Oh my god, do you know why this is so cute though? Because you know we when we've got like, like, hundreds of thousands of subscribers, we will be like, Can you remember that time when nobody even voted? <laughs> <laughs> and now we have loads of people voting. Well we will we'll, you know we'll put this episode out, you guys can be the judge. Leave it um, in the, yeah. Yeah. Bye then. These. Bye then. I mean, we're not even bothered who it's not like we compete. I'm not I'm exactly. not competitive. I don't know about you, but I'm really not competitive. At the start of the next episode, we'll tell you. We'll have a think about what how we can kind of do this that somebody wins or loses somehow. So we definitely want to get that involved. Yeah, that would be really the good. <laughs> exactly. So, well, let's say uh, we wish you all a fabulous Valentine's Day, and I hope you all get lots of lovely treats. Definitely. And if you don't remember, we love you. Yes, love yourself. Love yourself Ooh, first. Definitely love yourself first. <laughs> if, if you don't love yourself, how are you going to love somebody else? Oh, yes, Sorry, that's, RuPaul. That's don't. Exactly it. That's exactly <laughs> it. Don't, can I get sued for saying that line? Is that, does he own that phrase? I don't know. I don't know, but the thing is, it's, like, <laughs> it's true, isn't it? So, definitely. Yeah. It doesn't matter how cheesy you want to make it sound, it's true. So true. So, um, yeah. That uh, corny stuff, as in like subscribe, <laughs> hit that notification bell, so make sure that you're updated on all the new episodes that we upload. Stay up to date with us. And um, thanks for tuning in. This has been a a pleasure. <laughs> different. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye. Right, 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 right.